Okay, let's do the final adjustment, um, which is calculating the bad debt exp expense for the month. Now I've copied the um, information from helpful information in here, and it says this, that bad debt expense is calculated using the percentage of sales method at a rate of 1.25%, but at the end of the year, that's the 30th of June, we use the aging of receivables method. Now this you may not uh, fully understand yet and that's okay because we haven't done um, bad debt expense yet but if you want to go ahead there's a video on bad debt expense that will help you with this. So firstly I'll do this in two ways. Um, firstly I'll do it in two ways? Probably not. Firstly I'll do it in one way then I'll do it in another way. Now I'll do how we would normally in a normal month calculate the bad debt expense except this is not a normal month this is the end of the year the normal month is this we use the percentage of sales method and so that's credit sales so in order to do that we need to find out the credit sales in the month and then if there's any returns and allowances returns and allowances so we can find out the net credit sales Right out. So here's the normal method. We're in fact not going to use this, but if this was any month except for the last month of the year, this is what we do. Credit sales, how do we find out what the credit sales were? Well, think through this. Um, where were credit sales recorded? Well, they're in our special journal. Special journal, here is our credit sales. Here's our sales on credit. So there's our credit sales for the month, $98,680. Returns allowances, if there's any returns, where would they be? Well, we would find them in two places, but we'll look in the general journal. They should be recorded in the general journal. So um, we paid stuff for Orange Computers. Um, return of two computers to hardware supplies. Well. Um, that's an account payable, so we didn't return any. I mean, we returned some. No, our clients didn't return any to us. So we will have no um, returns and allowances. So that will be naught. So our net credit sales are $98,600 times minus naught. There was no returns and allowances. Now we normally set aside 1.25 percent of this. So times 0.0125 and that equals 1232 dollars and 50 cents. So normally would say in any month we, um, because of the prudence principle and also the matching principle, we want to set aside some money in case not all of our, in case we can't collect all of our accounts receivable. And we do this by saying, well, let's take a percentage of our um, credit sales and use that. And if that's the case, we've just calculated that we would have gone debit um, bad debt expense. One two three two fifty, and credit allowance for bad debts. One two three two fifty. Now, we are, however, not going to do that because that's a normal month. What we will do is we use a different method. So there's two main methods that people use and most most businesses would use each of them. And when we get to um, um, the accounts receivable section, we'll go through this in more detail. But this just gives you a sense of what does happen. So we're told we're going to age the accounts receivable. So where do you get this information from? Well, in fact, we've already calculated this for you. 
and we've calculated it for you and you'll find the information at the bottom of the opening trial balance. Now if you go to the bottom of the opening trial balance, you'll see this information here. There's our accounts receivable subsidiary ledger and it's been aged. What does it mean been aged? Well we see how much of that is current, we see how much of that has been um, one month or more, how much has been two months or more. So here's all the totals, so I'll take those and I'll copy this straight into our working papers, pay special values and <clears throat> we can see we've applied these percentages, 5%, 5.5%, 7.5%, that's the amount we're owed for 30 days, for current 30 days, 60 days and 90 days. So we're estimating that our total allowance for bad debts should be um, $10,073. That's what we should have had set aside allowance for bad debts. Now what we need to do is go to the general ledger and see how much we have set aside. So general ledger, allowance for bad debts, so where will we find that? It's a contra account to accounts receivable and we have set aside $13,835. So working paper. So paste special values. I could have just put a link through there. But. So we have set aside $13,000. We only need to set aside $10,000. So this is going to be a minus figure. So this is a rather complex transaction. Because what it means is we've set aside too much allowance for bad debts. So instead of um, having a debit to bad debt expense and a credit for allowance for bad debts, it's going to go the other way. We're going to have to reduce um, our allowance for bad debts because we've set aside too much. Um, allowance for bad debts is a contra asset, normal balance is a credit, so to reduce it, it will be a debit. So we go allowance for bad debts is 3762 and credit bad debt expense is 3762. Now that's our working paper. We need to put this in two places. Well, firstly, we will put it in 3762. Um, we'll go in the worksheet. So let's move across to the worksheet, which is the trial balance. Then we've done the worksheet. So we've got 3762 is allowance for bad debts. 3762. So it's reducing it, so it was a debit. I'm going to put it on the right side, 3762. And we go debit, bad debt expense, 3762. Um, the fact that they've gone red indicates that I've got this wrong. So um, I might have to redo this video, but I'll put it up in the short run. It could be that the, the model is wrong, but I'll press on at least now to show you what happens. So then we need to add these two columns up. And these won't go green. Um, so, 1242. Ah, sorry, 12412. 
Now that's the total of the adjustments and they balance out but again we can see the mere fact that they balance out doesn't mean this is correct. If they don't balance they could be wrong but if they don't balance they will be wrong. Let me go to um, the adjusted trial balance. So what we now need to do is take the credit minus the debit equals 1073. Now we'll go back and we should be able to check that to some external evidence. Um, allowance for bad debts. Um, Actually, what I think has happened in here is in the model answer has probably just done the, the um, first method. Anyway, let me move on. So 1073, if we uh, go to our accounts receivable, that list I just showed you, trial balance opening where it's sum summarised, where we see 173160 is our accounts receivable balance at the end of the period, that's correct. And our allowance for bad debts is 10,073. So those um, are in fact correct. So it does look like the model has a mistake in it. So let's press on. Notes receivable is nothing there. Inventory is um, the trial balance plus any adjustments. So there's no adjustments. Um, prepaid insurance. You can see it's, it would be 10,000. It's fallen by 1,000. Um, equipment will not change. Accumulated depreciation will increase by 1,000. So I've got a credit in the trial balance column, a credit in the adjustments column. We add them together. Again, we just keep going down with that process. And all the way down here. We do that with any credits. Now the debits equals debits in the um, debit column plus any debits in the adjustments column minus any credits in the adjustments column and that will be the same for the rest of these down here and again this one hasn't gone green because it's um, related to the allowance for bad debt expense. We add these up. And now, now we've done our trial balance, we've done our adjustments and our adjusted trial balance. We now, this journal here, we also need to enter it in the general ledger, in the general journal. So let's go to the general journal. And we have June 30. And we remember um, allowance for bad debts, which in fact fell, and bad debt expense. Um, calculation of allowance for bad debts at year end as per WP5. Then we'll go to working paper 5, working papers, run back through to the working papers, working paper 5, 3762. Now again, this has not gone green because um, I think there's a problem in the model. But I will go back and check 
my calculations to see if I've made a mistake. Now, each of these items now needs to be posted to the general ledger. So you can go ahead and do that. You should be good at posting um, items to the general ledger. Remember the same way that you posted these items up here. And they will all should go green except for this item. And bear in mind some of you that have um, don't have the most recent version of Excel, um, well, these items are not going green at the moment. So now back to the trial balance. And <clears throat> this is where we start to make a much more rapid progress. And it also displays the elegance of accounting. Here, we're going to produce our income statement. And what's our income statement? Our income statement is all our temporary accounts. So we can see income, sales, less returns, allowances, there was none. Then less all our expenses. Just run this all the way down. And we'll find out what our profit is. further so our profit is going to be $48,435 so we'll need to add $48,435 to bring this into balance so um, that's our income statement and we go through the same process for the balance sheet and the balance sheet is going to be all our permanent accounts and it's just a matter of copying these straight across it's a pretty straightforward process um, preparing our financial statements from the trial balance Oops, I've got this slightly out of shot here for you. So, a balance sheet. Now, the drawings there in fact are a, a temporary account and um, they're not really part of the balance sheet, but often in the worksheet they are put in the balance sheet area just um, for convenience. And that is so that we don't have to set up two more columns. But there's other ways that people have shown these. Now, one thing we'll notice here is that the balancing figure will be the same. Now, why is this? Well, eventually these will become equal. But this is where we get into doing our closing entries, which will, will come very soon. And what's closing? It's about taking all our temporary accounts and putting them into the capital accounts. So taking all the temporary accounts of owner's equity. Remember, these are all parts of owner's equity, and we're going to put them into the capital accounts of owner's equity. So there's the trial balance done, and you're really racing through um, the practice set now.